We can talk about carbs all day long, but today we're going to discuss only the juicy bits. I mean the most important bits, the basics. Carbohydrates consist of these units, sugars. Actually, they are called saccharides, but we won't go too deep into the terminology. Glucose is an example of a one sugar carb. Grapes have the highest level of glucose, seven grams of glucose per 100 grams of grapes. And as for raisins, glucose is almost one third of its weight. Glucose is the main source of energy for our body. Only it can be transferred to energy with almost any part of the body. When glucose gets in our body, it is absorbed by our bowels and then it travels with blood. If our muscles or organs need energy, they can get it from digesting glucose. There are other carbs with one sugar. For the most part, they become the same glucose. It happens in the bowels or the liver. Some sugars are not absorbed by our body and simply pass through. But a carbohydrate molecule can be more than just one sugar. There can be two, three, or even hundreds. Not just this contains sugar, but this too, and even this. But there is a difference between jam and ginger. Aloha, sportsmen. I think you have heard about simple and complex carbs. Let's talk about the difference. When carbohydrates contain one sugar, they are absorbed very quickly. So we obtain energy from it. When carbohydrates have several sugars in it, it breaks down into separate units. And we all know what happens next. If there are fewer than 10 molecules in a carbohydrate, this is a fairly quick process. But when there are more than 10, our digestive system needs to divide it into parts. Then do it again and again until they become separate parts. Carbohydrates with up to 10 sugars are called simple ones and those with more than 10 complex. They are different by transmitting energy to our body. Let's take two organisms. They don't have energy. One of them has a dose of simple carbs. Let it be sugar. The other one has complex carbohydrates. For example, risotto or some dish with whole grain pasta. Simple carbs give all the energy at once. So if you don't need it right now, it goes into storage. First, it can restore glycogens in your body, but this storage isn't limitless. So after that, this energy will be saved in an unlimited storage in our fat. That's why simple carbohydrates can be a reason for being overweight, and complex carbohydrates give energy longer and in smaller quantities. Belly fat and the excessive energy is less possible with the second variant. But if you consume a lot of complex carbohydrates and do not use them, you will have the same result. Eventually, they will also go to fat in the belly. Adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, is a result of the absorbed carbohydrates and fats which we get from our food or our storage. ATP gives us the necessary energy. Its molecule lives in our body for one minute. That's why it is constantly renewing itself. We use our energy even when we relax. When we exercise, we get ATP from the three different sources for explosive power, ready to use energy, for intensive training, carbohydrates, which we have in our storage, for low intensity training, fat, which we've saved in our body. So when you need to react from an upcoming threat, your body doesn't have enough time to produce energy from carbohydrates or fats. So your body uses pure energy from ATP. Every moment we have about 250 grams of ATP in our body. So why do we need all these complex processes of generating energy from fats and carbohydrates? It would be much easier if all the energy in our body was kept in ready to use energy. That is ATP. It is all because of the ATP mass. 250 grams of ATP gives only 10 kilocalories. Let's have a look at one of my recent workouts 
I needed about 1,100 kilocalories. It means that in my storage of pure energy, I should have 27.5 extra kilos with me. It's like running with this bottle. And that one, one more. Oh, and the small one. Is that okay? That's why we save energy in our body in lighter elements, carbohydrates and fats. We have fat all over the body and carbohydrates in our liver and muscles. So our body uses a cocktail of fats and glycogen to get the energy. When you have low intensity training, fats prevail in this cocktail. As you start to train more intensively, your body uses more glycogen as a result. So the level of glucose or sugar in your blood becomes higher. For low intensity workout, glucose level should be stable. And its rise during training means that glycogen storage becomes glucose to get energy for muscles. So the intensity is high. You can use a special device for constant real-time check of your glucose levels. Some professional athletes use such devices, and I also tried them. I will make a video about it. Although an amateur doesn't need to track their glucose level in real time, neither does a professional. You need to remember some simple facts about carbohydrates and their sugars. Carbs are not the enemy. They are the source of our energy. Simple carbohydrates are good if you need energy right now and your glycogen storage is empty. This can happen during a race. So you can use some gel to restore your energy. In other cases, it's better to consume complex carbs. And the last thing, there are carbohydrates in almost any food. Vegetables, fruits, grains, pasta, cereals, dairy products have carbohydrates in different quantities. So if your diet is not limited to meat or fish only, your body will get them. To sum it up, you shouldn't avoid carbohydrates, but you should consume them in the right amount and eat more food with complex carbs and don't forget to use your energy. To cut a long story short, consume complex carbohydrates and run further.